For many, he is a champion of the free press. For others, he is a dangerous hacker and a criminal. Julian Assange, the founder of Wikileaks, could face a life sentence for espionage if a London court decides to extradite him to the US. Last week, a decentralized autonomous organization called the Assange DAO raised a record $53 million in support of Assange. The fundraise showed how much support Julian Assange actually has and how much power can be wielded. Uh, the holy grail uh, of, of all this is that the charges in the US have dropped and, and uh, those powers stopped pursuing Julian uh, for publishing their secrets. Can the power of a DAO free Julian Assange? And why is the crypto community rallying in support of the whistleblower? To find out, we talk to Assange's brother, Gabriel Shipton, and Silk Kanoa, Assange DAO's core member. Welcome to another exclusive Cointelegraph interview. The Assange DAO recently managed to raise around $53 million in support of the cause of Julian Assange. So I would like to know, how do you evaluate these results? How is, are, are these funds going to be deployed exactly? And the, the most important thing is how likely is this initiative going to prevent the extradition of Julian Assange to the US? Gabriel, you want to start? Uh, well, so I think, you know, this was a, a historical effort. You know, this is a historical moment. Um, it's the highest amount. I think the highest amount raised through one of these, you know, it, it, we we, we managed to we managed to raise more than Constitution Dow, uh, so we sort of set records there. Um, the amount of people that came in, I think, ten thousand members uh, to the Dow, uh, so that that is another huge, huge thing. There's a ten thousand people who are all uh, behind Julian, Jul you know, getting Julian free, basically. Uh, what the funds will do, they will go towards Julian's defence. Uh, both legal and campaigning as well, and it will allow Julian um, to also do some offensive uh, legal work, which he hasn't really had the resources to as well. You were mentioning the offensive defense. So uh, what exactly do you mean by offensive defense? So this will allow Julian to, uh, you know, launch legal uh, proceedings of his, uh, of his uh, like, you know, launch legal proceedings against uh, parties that, that, were in, uh, that have been involved in his persecution. So you can see that has happened, uh, say, in Spain, uh, where there's been a big, uh, a big, a big investigation into UC Global, who were the um, security company uh, that was supposed to be guarding uh, Julian in the Ecuadorian embassy, uh, but it turned out that they were actually CIA assets uh, spying on him, and you know coming up with plans to uh, kidnap and murder him stealing his baby's DNA. So uh, that's one example of an offensive legal uh, proceeding. So Julian will be able to bring uh, more offensive legal proceedings uh, using these funds in, in different territories uh, where, where his persecution um, has, you know, where it's sort of um, the irregularities and the, and the, um, the government corruption has been. Mm -hmm. And uh, most importantly, how likely do you think that this initiative is going to prevent uh, Julian's extradition to the US? Because I guess that this is the main goal of the initiative. The, the thing you want to prevent is that uh, Julian is, get, is getting extradited to the US. And over there, uh, as far as I understand, uh, he risks to be jailed for uh, 170 years uh, because of espionage charges. So how how uh, important how effective uh, do you think this is, this campaign is going to be in preventing that outcome from happening from i happening? think yeah well now you know julian's going to be able to uh, ramp up a uh, political campaign as you know this is as much a political case as it is a legal case um the legal the legal portion uh, you know julian's sort of stuck in this rat race uh where where there's sort of the, the legal system just keeps him going, keeps him in prison, and he sort of has to navigate through that. Uh, but it's the political side that is is where this case will be won. So I think that's what uh, something that you know everyone focuses on the funds and and what's been raised. But really, uh, the show of support and the sort of worldwide press that this show of support got uh, really you know sends a message to the people who are go who are going after Julian that there is. There, is, there are supporters out there who Julian has a huge constituency 
and they're you know they're smart people uh they're wealthy people and they're willing to do something uh to support julian so it really sends a message a political message that uh there is some political cost to this uh persecution of julian so i think you know there's it's not just the funds but it's this this political side that i think is most important now i would like to get into the details of the um of the auction because the funds were raised uh, uh, during an NFT auction called uh, Censored that was created by Assange and digital artist Pack. So the collection includes a 1-1 uh, piece called Clock and uh, an open interactive edition. So maybe Silke, uh, can you uh, guide us through the, the, specific, the specifics of this NFT auction? Um. So um, there, um, there are two um, parts of the NFT. There's a one-on-one -on -one clock, um, which we bid on. It's an interactive clock, actually, that counts, that counts down the days since uh, Julian Assange's arrest. arrest. And um, this uh, one-on-one clock is uh, accompanied by the censored collection, which allowed anyone in um, during the time of the auction um, to mint their own NFT with a message. Um, so you could, for example, write a message truth and it was censored with a bar through it. And why are they interactive? Because when Julian is going to be freed, um, the bar on the clock will stop and the bar will disappear um, on all those NFTs. Um, this was uh, the the race actually um, took place on uh, not any NFT platform, so it wasn't on OpenSea or any of the other platforms, but it was actually self-hosted. Um, this was done to ensure that really 100% of the proceeds can actually go to Julian Assange's legal defense. And Pak, um, the artist um, that uh, produced this NFT together with uh, Julian Assange, actually is getting nothing from the one on one clock for this, it was all done for free. And both of them have been working on this since May last year. Yeah, I saw the, um, the clock piece. It's a very minimalistic, but very impactful kind of piece. And also, those messages uh, were very. Um, it's a very interesting idea that everyone can write his own uh, message and uh, it's cool that when, when hopefully Assange will get um, liberated, then those messages will also kind of be liberated. Um, yeah, um, there were, I think there were, there were 29, I think 29,000 people, individuals, so 29,000 yeah. 29, individual wallet addresses minted, uh, you know, one of the censored pieces. And one other element to those is that they are now uh, locked to those wallets so that you, that you can't trade them until uh, clock sets to zero when Julian is free. So we, have a, we, we now have 30,000 uh, collectors who have an interest in, in you know, setting Julian free so they can trade their, their um, Julian and Puck censored NFT. Another aspect is that you could actually donate as much as you wanted to. So if you wanted to donate, I don't know, 10 ETH uh, for that, you could, but you could also donate 1.0.00001 um, ETH, uh, which I found, thought was very nice. Yeah, because it kind of uh, lowered the barrier for entry so that everyone can participate, basically. Yeah, that's, that's uh, I guess, one of the main plus of NFT technology. Um, but I would, I would like to get a bit more of an understanding of what is the, the best outcome that you would like to achieve. Like, would you expect uh, Assange to be released of all charges and be a completely free man? Or you, you, how do you expect this uh, process to evolve in the, in the next months? Maybe, Gabriel, you want to give us your perspective on this. Yeah, well, Julian, uh, so Julian's just submitted uh, on the first day of the auction, on the 7th of February, Julian submitted an application to appeal to the Supreme Court in the UK. So uh, that's the most immediate, uh, the most immediate result would be the UK rejecting, uh, or the UK approving uh, Julian's appeal and rejecting the extradition. Uh, that, that would probably uh, be the soonest that he would be able to walk free. Uh, I, I, I guess, you know, I, ideally the charges need to be dropped in, in the US. Um, that, that would be the sort of 
the holy grail uh, of, of all this is that the charges in the US had dropped and, and uh, those powers stopped pursuing Julian uh, for publishing their secrets. Let's get back to the DAO um, mechanism. So uh, I'm curious to know, why did you think that the DAO uh, would be the right mechanism in, to, to raise funds for, for Assange? So couldn't you just ask for, for example, donation in crypto? That, wouldn't that be the same? Silke, you, you want to reply to this one? Yeah, I mean, our current world um, regularly and especially right now shows us um, the limits of individual agency. And what DAOs do is they're squad based communities. Um, they help us to get this agency back. I mean, in the recent part, past, what we have seen, you know, we have seen a financial flash mob behavior which took down VCs. Um, the same is the case now. So, um, DAOs, in a way, they are very powerful token based coordination mechanism um, that any person now can wield um, outside of the, um, the legacy um, financial system and economic system. And um, the cypherpunks wielded it um, to assist in freeing Assange. Um, I mean, the Assange DAO is, in, in, per definition, is an impact DAO, as opposed, for example, an investment DAO. Um, and we use a DAO to influence the legacy meat space um, by raising those funds for Julian Assange's legal defense. And as you just heard from, uh, from Gabriel, I mean, a lot of money is actually needed seeing all these um, potential prosecutions and actually ongoing one. Um, the donations alone would not have allowed to give us those, to give those who have donated this, uh, this voice in the medium and long term. By using a DAO, we issued a token, a governance token, and that actually, the DAO that way can have much more impact than just donating funds. As you said, every single donor that participated in the campaign had right on a proportional amount of justice token. So what can a donor do with this justice, justice token? So I'll just continue and Gabriel, please uh, chime in. So everyone who donated, um, so it was uh, said that one ETH got one million to justice token. So the overall supply wasn't fixed. It was just fixed by the time and how, and how much was donated. Um, we received more than uh, 10,000 donations, individual donations. So as I, had, as I had been previously announced, the justice token is a governance token um, to govern the Assange DAO. Um, the token was issued only after the race was over um, to ensure that there was no interaction between a secondary market and the race itself. Um, I mean, not right now, I am a multi-sig member of the core um, a wallet, which is a Gnosis safe. Um, but um, to be able to basically somehow steward the community um, prior to it being seeded through this token, um, the plan is to um, immediately relinquish all governance powers to the DAO. Um, and the DAO now holds the NFT. So the DAO might fractionalize it, um, remain it, uh, use the remaining funds, um, including a 3.8% uh, stake in the Juicebox uh, DAO, um, to have a much wider impact than just uh, funding the legal costs, which itself was a huge success. Now I would like to discuss uh, the relationship between uh, Julian Assange and the crypto community. So Gabriel, you have been going to cryptocurrency conferences for years, trying to gather support for the cause of Julian Assange, because you thought that the um, crypto community has, uh, like the goals of the crypto community are totally aligned with Julian Assange's philosophy. So can you uh, explain this connection that you see between um, the crypto industry and uh, uh, Julian, what Julian Assange stands for? So I guess it goes back to the cypherpunk mailing list. Um, you know, that's where, you know, Julian was a member of that, as well as a lot of people who were the, you know, uh, the first people to be involved in Bitcoin. So there was this alignment of philosophy, uh, philosophies there, you know, uh, WikiLeaks, um, you know, was sort of a decentralized news, decentralized uh, source material in a way, like, you know, took, took, uh, you know, source material was usually guarded by 
large corporations, these media corporations, you know, they would get leaks, they would put it through their editorial and, and uh, you, you would receive, you know, you wouldn't know exactly what the documents were that were leaked, they would stay in the files of these corporations. So uh, in a way, uh, what WikiLeaks did was sort of decentralize, uh, decentralize um, those source documents so that anybody could read them. Uh, and it wasn't gone, it didn't go through the filter of the sort of corporate news structure. Uh, also, WikiLeaks in 20, after they published uh, the Iraq war logs, uh, the Afghan war diaries, the cable set and the Guantanamo Bay detainee files in 2010, which, what, which is actually what Julian has been um, charged with for publishing those. Uh, after they published those, there was an extra legal banking blockade on uh, WikiLeaks. Uh, so they uh, took down, uh, they confiscated, they took, took, out, took down their PayPals, confiscated the balances in the PayPal, uh, Visa and MasterCard stopped processing donations. Uh, to WikiLeaks, they closed down Julian's personal bank accounts. Uh, so they were, uh, so there was this uh, extra legal banking blockade that was trying to starve WikiLeaks uh, of funds uh, to kill it. So at, at that time, I think Bitcoin was, I think it was, you know, just uh, sort of a, in its beta beta type uh, mode, and uh, Julian, uh, you know, adopted it basically. Um, and one, I think one of last one of Satoshi's last posts. Is says is, is WikiLeaks kicked the hornet's nest and they're coming for us or something like that. So uh, WikiLeaks was ended up being the first sort of use cases um, as sort of uncensorable money uh, that you know for Bitcoin uh, and it, and allowed WikiLeaks to keep publishing for those four years uh, that 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 they were cut off uh, from from the banking system. So it was like the, you know, that, that sort of propelled Bitcoin and, and showed that it actually works, uh, you know, as uncensorable uh, money and can be used by people who are, you know, uh, very politically compromised. Yeah, that makes sense. Although I have a question here. So we know that uh, there, is, there are still uh, issues about uh, how to cash out once you receive a big donation like the one that you realize. So uh, those, those cryptos, in order to uh, pay for those uh, legal expenses, these offensive legal expenses and the whole uh, yeah, su support campaign for Assange, they probably will need to go through some sort of uh, uh, cash out off ramp points. So is it not uh, something that, uh, how are you gonna ensure that those points won't be censored? Uh, well, it's going. Well, it'll go through a. Uh, we have a sort of proven path through the Wow Holland Foundation in in Germany, uh, that has been taking crypto donations for Julian's defense. So there is a pathway there uh, for these donations to be uh, turned into fiat when they need to be, and uh, get gotten to where you know gotten to the lawyers, uh, you know, to pay them. Okay, and that's pretty safe. That's like a, a safe path. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and the Wow Helen Foundation has come under attack before, and they've managed to resist. Uh, you know, they've resist. Um, they've resisted attacks in the past, so they are. Uh, you know, they're sort of a resistant place. Uh, there's a lot of Julian's uh, politically in Germany. There's a lot of political support uh, for Julian. The foreign minister in Germany has spoken out in defence of Julian. Uh, there is a large cross-party group there, so there is, you know, there's a lot of political, uh, political, uh, you know, there's good political cover for Julian in Germany as well. So uh, that's another layer of uh, of protection. As far as I understand, the scope of the Assange DAO is not. Uh... This is not the end of the scope of the Assange DAO, because on the DAO website, you claim that a new era of a cypherpunk organization has dawned. And uh, uh, Amir Taki, another core member of the Assange DAO, told the Reuters, the Assange DAO represents a Rubicon that's been crossed. So what exactly does uh, what exactly do these statements uh, mean? Maybe uh, you want to, to give your perspective, Silke. Um, as I just mentioned, um, first, I cannot speak for Ametake, but uh, I think what he meant to say is that um, that DAOs, as in general, found their way into mainstream, um, and the mainstream will now use it to voice to make their voices heard. 
um, not just in relation to, um, I mean, not particular to the Assange style, but of course, I mean, the fundraise showed how much support Julian Assange actually has and how much power can be wielded. This is not going to change, you know. We cannot, I mean, basically, there's the, you cannot turn back the clock on this ability to coordinate. Um, it has not been pre previously possible, but it will be in the future. I would say that uh, no matter how do you personally relate to the figure of Julian Assange, I think that everyone could agree that the freedom of press is a paramount element for democracies. So that's what uh, Julian Assange has been standing for. Um, and so hopefully um, everything is going to be fine. And uh, I wish you the best of luck, guys, for your future initiatives. Thank you. Thanks a lot.